Hi there, welcome into Energy Upgrade Feng Shui Tips 2022. I am Lisa Albin and I am a Feng Shui Master Quantum Energy Alignment Practitioner. And I'm about to share with you a process called Energy Upgrade. And if you're new here, welcome. It's by no accident that you found me. I invite you to stick around and, um, and work with me in this session. If you are returning, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your like and subscribes and shares. And this channel is attracting in exactly the right people who need to receive these messages exactly at this time. So I'm very grateful for each and every one of you and for reaching out and also for supporting me in this endeavor. And it's just been really beautiful. I love hearing your stories. I love to hear when something resonates. So if you hear something that resonates with you as I'm holding this session, drop a comment below, let me know. And that gives me an idea of how I can show up and serve you better in your life path journey. Again, um, I own two businesses. I tend to attract in people who are looking for guidance in businesses, entrepreneurship, and therefore I show up within my consultancy and in the Intrinsic School of Feng Shui, um, and I offer a lot of guidance for people with business. As we know in business, it's all about relationships, right? So if you're here for a specific relationship um, issue or challenge or goal, then you're also in the right place because they are interrelated. And, uh, and you never know, right? There's a reason and being for everything and nothing is by accident. I wanna remind you that everything contains the en energy. So if you're showing up and you're feeling a little bit depleted, I would like for you to put this on pause, get hydrated, get centered if you need to, take three cleansing breaths. Let everything melt away from all the stress of the week. Uh, if you are finding this right after the full moon in April, then that might be part of it, right? We just did a lot of releasing, and therefore we might feel a little detached and lofty, but things are shifting big time. I know a lot was happening in the energy, especially as of the last time we checked in with one another, and so I want to know how you're feeling coming out of it, right? Things are changing, things are shifting. This is really, really nice energy we're in. If you're finding this past April, this message is for you as well because this energy doesn't have a timestamp on it even though I am giving this session um, April 17th. If you're finding this later in the year or even next year, the year following, this energy is related to you in some way, somehow. And um, I, if there's something that resonates going to help you and give you visibility uh, to how you can move forward in your life path journey with more clarity and ease. Once you're fully hydrated, I'd like for you to get a notebook and a pen that writes free flowing so you can take notes and also so you can write down your goal and your intentions that you desire. This is There's no um, right or wrong way, but in Feng Shui, we like to use a brand new black ink pen uh, when we're doing something with intention. And certainly if we are writing any contracts or anything binding, and this is an agreement with yourself to achieve something that you desire. So that's my tip to you. Grab your black ink pen, brand new preferably, one that's not going to give you any trouble in writing out your desires, and just really download it. Like what is it that you desire, something that you desire, and, and even greater than that. Let's not put any thing in a box. Um, I want to remind you that our goals, we think that we want something specific sometimes, and it's because sometimes we can only comprehend uh, existence, future existence, based on what we have learned, but in doing so, we're limiting ourselves, right? Um, we really, our desires are greater than that which we can even understand at this time. So let's not try to put it in a box. You can put it in context based on your life experience that you desire blank and something greater um, and allow that to be received how it shows up. And, um, and keep your wits about you after this session um, and be on a lookout. Let's get started because I'm really excited about this current energy that we're in and I think you will be too. So let me minimize myself I've already gone ahead and consulted of the Ancient Book of Changes, also known as the Yi Jing. If you are practicing the Yi Jing along with me, students and friends from my Facebook group, High Vibe Entrepreneurial Women, if you're participating and following along using your own Yi Jing book, 
Then let's take a look at hexagram number 55. That is the current energy that we're in right now, right about now when you're receiving this. And it is the energy of great abundance. Oh, I skipped over a very important part after you've be become hydrated and written your goal and really just started to visualize as best as you can and allow it to be greater than what your mind can even allow in, I invite you to light a candle as I have done at the beginning of a session, at the beginning of any working session, even if it's a work day for me. Light yourself a candle or you can use a sound bowl, um, something to initiate your intentions into action, okay? Because um, this is going to allow you to feel a greater connection to this session and also to ultimately to your goals. So light a candle or you can use a sound bowl um, to initiate this session. Now that we've taken all of our breaths and we have our notebook laid out, um, the current energy right now is really fun, great abundance. Um, so success and prosperity are imminent and at their peak potential right at this time. Can you see it? Use this time to lay the foundation for future endurance of, um, of finances, of um, as if we're talking about businesses. I feel like a sneeze is coming on. I'm going to put this on a pause for a second and come back. Okay, so... Whew. So in this energy, use the success that you are obtaining to lay the foundation so that you have endurance to prolong this energy longer. We've talked about this before too because endurance can be, I'm sorry, success can be fleeting. And as we know with every up, there's a down. Inevitably, we're not always going to be riding high in success, but what we can do is prepare for the dips. And especially in business, this is really important because um, especially if you're newer, an entrepreneur, um, and really just in, in the resilience of any business right now, prepare um, and to have longevity and endurance to, to ride out any lows that you may experience. And if your goal and objection is in relation to relationships, this is the same. You're going to want to make sure that you're using the successful attainment to make sure that you're able to prolong the high energy. So you're not just going to say, yay, I achieved my relationship desires and then let it go. You need to continue feeding in to what made it successful as a relationship. It needs nourishment. It needs to be able to sustain any lows. So make sure the foundation is there. Make sure the trust is there. Make sure that you are feeding into uh, what brought about this success in relationship. So think about that too. If there is an imbalance due to the success that you have achieved because you've been pouring your soul into achieving this goal. All right, so no harm in deep diving and applying all of your heart and soul into achieving a goal, but sometimes we alienate um, we isolate and we and I've been there I've done it in any situation business and relationship it's not healthy to have an imbalance even if it's in terms of success because who's going to be with you at the top if you've alienated everyone and isolated yourself in order to achieve the success so take a little look at this I'm going to start doing some emotional aura work using the SRC for you which is a software designed by energy healers and what we're going to be doing is checking in on what is the energy in our emotional aura so our objective is having auras around us uh, energy is if you don't understand what an aura is it's okay but think of it as um, the energy that we're emanating as humans so it's the energy around us that we contain and if there's anything that um, is not whole within our aura field, meaning there are leaks or holes and permeations, then we're going to have um, a susceptibility to negative energy. It will be able to infiltrate um, our aura. So our best energetic level is going to be threatened if we don't have a secured aura. So what this system is going to do is work along the negative channel. The negative channels of EMF also have positive channels. So the opposite 
of the negative attributes of EMF also has a positive. This is exchanging energy in a positive way, connecting you and I with our intention. By typing in your names as Energy Upgrade YouTube viewers into the box, I am establishing a connection between you and I and also the software. And I'm going to be with intention using the intuitive discernment of the software to pull on what is impacting our emotional aura field at this time and allow the software to do repair work to reestablish whole aura fields for all of us so they're not, we're not feeling um, open to threat. So let's take a look at that. In our emotional aura field, there is a needing um, a need to access more sincerity, uh, decrease self-deprecation, a uh, negative self-trait of unmotivated, now, these are very low levels. Um, within the work field, guilt is projected as unforgiving emotional attitude. Ooh, okay, so that's pretty heavy. Uh, let me know if this resonates with you. These things are going to be um, mitigated. So anything negative, we're gonna access what we need in a positive level to make sure that we are as whole as possible as individuals. So there's also a theme of lack of charity um, needing to access do unto others as you would have them do unto you and a negative self trait of threatened Oh gosh. Okay, so let's start that in the background and we'll come back to it All right, so getting back to our Yi Jing um, So we talked about the idea of pouring our heart and soul into something and that's useful to do when we're trying to achieve a goal, but when we don't um, when we do it in a way that's isolating and repelling of others, who's going to be there when we reach our goal to enjoy it? So take this as an opportunity to be really grateful. You achieved your goal. You're, you're at the peak of your potential. And find a way to not only be grateful, but include relationships that might have suffered in your pursuit of this goal, whether it be in business or relationships. Perhaps you're in a new relationship and you poured your heart and soul in it. Did you, did you exclude any friends uh, along the way? And are they saying, where is so-and-so? They just poured themselves into this relationship. Yes, the relationship is great, but where are your friends? So take this as an opportunity to perhaps even have a party, a dinner party, or celebrate together. If this is um, in regards to business, it's a great idea to pull together a celebratory dinner and really just be transparent. Say like, hey guys, um, you might not have seen me for the past month because I had this goal and I was pouring my heart and soul in it and I just realized that I've been excluding you and, I, and be very transparent and be, you know, share where you're coming from. It might help to apologize and just realize and share that you're just now realizing this imbalance and you're not gonna allow it to occur again as best as you can. I know we're only human. If you can include these individuals as counsel for you or supporters and involve them on some level, you're going to get bonus points because they're going to be, they're going to feel better. They maybe have been wishing that you would have included them in some way and perhaps um, this will repair your relationships and strengthen you because it, we need counsel. We need counsel in our relationships to agree um, and, and business too, some involvement and supporters especially if you're a new entrepreneur, the word of mouth, um, you never know who can be your best marketer. You never know who might be a good collaborator. Um, be open to celebrating with these individuals and have a round table discussion. Let's talk about this, you know, recognize, you do an analysis of like, I recognize these are my shortcomings and these are the good things and what can we do going forward? And you might learn something. You might have someone really wise right around you at this time because you've been doing so much energy work in clearing out those relationships that aren't good for you. So you have good people around you and they want to help you likely. So it's really going to behoove you to align forces and it's going to feel weird, but sometimes, especially in business, and I'll, I'll say also in relationships, when someone has a similar goal as you, you might feel this need to isolate and keep yourself secret because you're afraid that they're going to take all of your abundance, which is silly because there's enough abundance 
for everybody. There's more out there than there are of us of anything in, in any line of work, in any relationship. And sometimes we want, and this also might strike a chord with someone, we feel comfortable um, and it's not a good thing, but when we feel comfortable, we want people to commiserate with when we're struggling. That's not healthy, by the way. <laughs> it's okay to be like, hey, you know, we're struggling together, but the objective should be to grow and expand, not stay in that comfortable and um, commiserating feeling, although you might find some joy in laughing about it to a degree, but that's not a positive way to put momentum into any goal. So align forces perhaps with someone who has similar goals with you, maybe someone a little bit further along than you in, in either business or relationships, depending on your goal, and, um, and look for ways that you can be an ally to each other and talk about it because you can succeed together. There's enough abundance to go around. They are not a threat in this instance. Um, so be fully transparent about your goals that you know when someone, based, based on if you wanna scroll back to the previous energy upgrade session we had, you're gonna know when it's not a fair exchange of energy. And, and it will be easy for you to bail out of a conversation if you pick up on any imbalance there, either of you taking advantage of that person or they taking advantage of you. This is time to see and be seen. Social awareness is really enhancing of this abundant energy. So also having this ability to have an overview. Okay. Oh, speak this three times today. So when you speak this three times today, I am contrite. Write it down in cursive or um, cursive allows us to light up various versions of our brains that we might not use doing day-to-day -day operations and typing or writing um, using simple text. But when we write in cursive, it integrates more of that creative, uh, uses more of, uh, it has been shown scientifically that it integrates and lights up in a brain scan more areas than we use day to day. And so that allows these words to um, be digested in a deeper levels through all the levels of our consciousness and awareness. So that's a tip from one of my um, mentors that I'm sharing with you. And I think you're gonna find it really quite useful, especially as you're writing affirmations. Now these words of wisdom, we know that words each carry a special energy. So these words, just really digesting them on their own is doing some work on some level, um, some repair work to something that we're dealing with. Think about what this means to you. Is this even a conversation that you've had recently? Is it something that you've picked up on TV? Um, this is something that's gonna help you access sincerity. So I think it's really important to point out too, this is not a scripted words of wisdom that I put in. It's been pulled from the SRC for you, for us to receive at this time, Energy Upgrade YouTube viewers needing to access sincerity. And think about I am contrite and what that means to you. And I think what's interesting is it's talking about I am contrite, you know, that means regretful, remorseful, guilty. And we were just talking about the concept of in this current energy being in an imbalance because there is a bit of separation from relationships. And, you know, for me initially, and let me know what you think, but being contrite and being remorseful or regretful or even guilty is owning up that you are carrying this energy on some level that's not serving you at this time, owning up to, uh, yeah, I feel super guilty because I've been excluding my family and my friends. I've been isolating myself. And to be able to release this remorse and regret by resolving this issue and really shifting into an energy of inclusion is going to be so nice for everybody and it will help you. It will help you sustain this greater abundance for a longer period of time. Just think about allowing regret and remorse sneak into your energy field as we're talking about high vibes. That's a low vibe 
energy, we do have to have some accountability and recognize that we are bringing in um, this energy by, by isolating ourselves and excluding people. And there's, there's no success that should ever be more important than, um, than including those that we love. What is success without people to enjoy it with? So I don't know if this is resonating with anybody right now. Let me know in the comments. Maybe it means something different for you, but that's what's coming through for me big time. And I would be really interested to hear if you're picking up on something else intuitively. Be on the lookout for, again, signs and synchronicities around you. Uh, if you certainly, if you see a repetition of something three times, that is the universe giving you a, a clear indication that you should be looking it up. If you're seeing an animal three times, you can look up the sh shamanic meaning of that animal and see if perhaps it is a, maybe it's even a power animal for you. Um, but if you look up the shamanic meaning, sometimes we are exhibiting traits or need the support of the traits that that animal portrays. And it might help you in your situation. So look for signs and synchronicities, any downloads that you might have, write them down underneath the piece of paper that you wrote on with your goal. And that will help you to embody and step into really own this abundance and getting into a place where you have this ability to see and be seen and really be your authentic self and and get rid and shed and, you know right the wrong get rid of and shed any uh, negative vibes that might be holding you back on some level and you might not have even realized that was something that you had until right now but also you know it's in terms of taking down some walls allow some people in that maybe even have the same goal as you they're not a threat and it might be in your nature to keep yourself your desires secret because you don't want someone to take them from you. <laughs> and I certainly understand that, but you don't have to worry at this time. I'm gonna leave you with a super charge um, this evening or today or whenever you receive this. I wanna remind you that as we are doing feng shui cures to help align our energy with the spaces around us, it's important that you visualize we recommend using a mantra, which is using a, um, you know, a an affirmation or a mantra. Uh, we love to use Om Mani Padme Hum. If you haven't heard of it, Google it on YouTube. There's lots of beautiful chants out there. We recommend repeating your affirmation or mudra nine times and using a mudra or hand symbol. Uh, I like to use prayer hands, totally acceptable, but you might know a lot of fancy mudras, especially if you are my feng shui friends and you um, you have your own favorite blessing mudra, open heart mudra, um, my yoga friends out there, you can use a favorite mudra as well. I'm going to come back to a feng shui cure that I can recommend, but for now I'm going to charge you watching at home with some energy to carry you through this great abundance time in a way that will be sustainable. So. Let's get started on that. I like it. It's really fun and it's fast and and you deserve it. A little extra boost. So obviously abundance and prosperity. And I'm going to say um, clear communication with those around you that you need to reconnect with and perhaps apologize to and share your story and in do it in an authentic way. So I'm gonna say courage to be authentic. And I would also like to charge you with the frequency of, um, gosh, what I wanna say, say here, as we talked about that. Um, yeah, I wanna say also like, um, unconfined oh okay let's say no expectations of what your goal will look like or how it will arrive because it's that energy's there it's coming in but let's make sure like you recognize it because it might not show up how you ordered it right um, and also, I want to, um, ability, as we're talking about inviting people to be our camp counsel in our life journey, 
ability to discern and identify a wise counsel. And that's also, um, let's see, it's to do trust and nourishment. Don't let yourself become depleted from all this high energy. Make sure you're nourishing yourselves. This is gonna sustain you. This frequency will sustain you for two weeks, but we will have an overlap. I will be putting out another energy upgrade and feng shui tips. So as we're talking about implementing feng shui cures to help align you with this newly calibrated energy, let's think about easy, as we're talking about great abundance, right? Let's talk about activating our abundance corner today, or abundance gua, as we're talking about ba guas, which is the energy map or template that we use in feng shui. So if you're looking at your home, the back left corner of your home, or from the front door, or the back left corner of any room as you walk in the door that enters into the room, the corner of abundance, also called wealth and prosperity, it contains an energy of of, um, of, of self-worth to a degree as well as, as this one chart that I pulled from the internet it says. You'll find lots of charts. Um, take it with a grain of salt. Um, if you need help identifying a chart, you can reach out to me. I'll take a look at the link provided in the bio description. You can reach out to my alumni in the school and they'll help you identify if a chart that you find is accurate. It is accurate to say that this area contains the element, should have the most dominant element being wood so that applies to wood floors and wood materials and um, anything that is growing tall uh, we love to see bamboo and flowers florals are representative of wood so having these elements in that corner is going to be great we want to make sure there's dominant of uh, that there also adding in a mirror for example um, representing water so water nourishes and creates more wood and therefore more abundance without having to have add in more wood. So have a dominant presence of water and wood in this back left corner of your room, of, um, of your house, of your desk space even, and place something with intention. Use the three secrets that I just described. Visualize your goal as if you're receiving it. Meditating, um, you can draw it, you can just really deeply envision it um, that you are experiencing the feeling as if you're receiving your goal. Using your favorite mantra, um, Oh My Name Pad Me Home is mine. You can use any affirmation, you can find affirmations virtually anywhere, one that um, aligns best with you. And um, in and, and gratitude, in an energy of gratitude for receiving your desires and something greater. And repeat it nine times using a, a mudra or a hand position the entire time. Repeating nine times, nine symbolizes completion, achieving a goal. And so that's your little mini feng shui tip and my recommendation um, for you to have a cure within your own space to align and attune your energies. So this is a little bit longer than normal. I hope it's been helpful to someone out there. If I can help one person and I've done my job, and it's been a sincere joy to check in with you in this energy. I'm really excited. I can't wait to hear about it. And boy, what a shift, right? Because I know some people are really in some dark places and, um, and good job in making it through. And we're always going to have dips now and then it happens, but this is going to be fun. Enjoy it. Find joy and enjoy it with others. That's it for now. Um, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. You, you pressing that like button tells me that you like this session and that you're receiving it well and that I should continue doing it. Hitting subscribe, great. That's your gift to me. I'm not charging for these. I do offer deep dive sessions. You can access it following the link provided in my bio and description if you desire your own personal session with me. And um, But just you hitting subscribe helps me keep this channel going and it's beautiful to watch it grow and I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Share with a friend, someone you love or someone else that might enjoy a session like this that's organic 
and using the ancient and the modern. It's great fun. If you're looking to learn with me, learn feng shui with me, you desire to become a student of feng shui, I'm looking for um, people to uh, apprentice with me. Check out the, the Intrinsic School of Feng Shui. We're a part of the International Feng Shui Guild. If you become a student of mine and Steve Kodad of the Feng Shui Cure, we teach you our secrets to success along with what we've been taught from our masters in Feng Shui that will bring us happiness and success and share it with more and more people. We're so proud of the alumni and students that we have and we would love um, to see if you're a great fit in joining us. So that's it for now. It's been so wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I was looking for a time of abundance. It feels so nice already. So enjoy. I'll see you next week. Many blessings times nine.